And this very month, famed Louisville sculptor Ed Hamilton is celebrating more than a half century in business, creating statues like this for Louisville and other cities. And on Valentine's Day, he's going to turn 77 years old. Along with photojournalist Nick Goldring and senior photojournalist Alyssa Newton, I talked to Ed about his projects, how he's always viewed racial issues, and his hope for our city. What's the best compliment you could get as the sculptor of Abe Lincoln on the Louisville waterfront? Well, I'll let the man himself, Ed Hamilton, tell you about his friend and the president. Oh, no, I got a buddy that goes down and he has a little libation with Lincoln and sits there and, you know, chills little, out. Little cognac. Yeah, a little cognac, yeah, yeah. And, and I got to get down there with him, but I haven't gotten down there with him. <laughs> Hamilton <laughs> Studio since 1978 in Phoenix Hill da, 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 da. is always full of music and is a treasure itself. Oh, high school, 12th grade, that's me, yeah. This was before you made it big. Yeah. This, this is one of the first pieces. The man best known for sculpting two different Lincolns, the one in Louisville and one at Center College, and York of the Lewis and Clark Expedition is also an artist. You recall the old Churchill Down paddock before they remodeled? This was years ago. To keep him in the mood while creating Lincoln, Hamilton played the soundtrack of Ken Burns' Civil War documentary. You know, so I go between the real and the abstract, but now I go more for the real because my dear wife Bernadette said, your real work will carry you. Most recently, he's been completing his sculpture of Humana co-founder David Jones Sr. But his studio is also a trip through history. You know who that gentleman is, don't you? The late uh, Supreme Court judge, Bill Malkinoffi. The first black justice on the Kentucky Supreme Court. And Ed looking out of hole and floor for Booker T. Washington, 1984. That's you. That's me, I did that. You're a good looking guy. I know it. Ed grew up in Louisville. Here he is as a little boy, most likely around his father's barbershop, which was located on the old Walnut Street near 7th. Walnut is now Muhammad Ali Boulevard. In and out of the shop, skating, I was mobile, always trying to escape so that my mama didn't know where I was going because she was going to say, where are you going? Ed grew up in this building right here on the upper floor at 7th and Walnut. The building and his dad's shop are long gone, lost to urban renewal. He was actually born in Cincinnati and then adopted at birth. His adoptive parents brought him to Louisville. I didn't have to be here. I mean, really, uh, it could have gone down the two. Ed grew up in what was then the heart of Louisville's black community. It was vibrant, bustling, full of music and restaurants, right in the middle of the city where everyone took care of each other. They were just as well as my parents as well. You know, Lil Biff couldn't do no wrong. Or if Lil Biff did something wrong, I'm telling your mama. What about the fact that you got to live your calling? Well, you know how I got to be able to live my calling was it starts with your parents. It starts with your mom. In the racially segregated 70s, Hamilton was attending U of L and Spalding. By then, he was also crafting his own art pieces. But he had a goal to meet Louisville's famed sculptor Barney Bright. So one day, he waited outside Bright's studio and waited. This is called Earth Mother. And this is one of the first big pieces that I saw of him. That day, Bright came out to get the mail, saw Hamilton, and invited him in. The two connected. How many people will walk in Barney Bright studio and, and, <laughs> and become an apprentice just like that? And with this color. You see, it, it mattered not to him. He just knew that I had the talent and I could do what he wanted me to do. Along the way, Ed married his amazing wife, Bernadette, and had two children. He's met presidents, visited the White House, and he and Bernadette spent time with then Prince Charles during his visit to Louisville. His view of our city has always been so clear-eyed. His legacy is literally in bronze, but I've always felt his heart is truly gold. From a man who was adopted, brought here, had a great childhood right in the heart of the black community, what's the message you want to send to people? It takes no effort to be kind. It takes no effort 
to, to, to put a hand down. We're more alike than we think that Louisville can become the best it can be. And I know it, I, I'm optimistic, I think it can. You're not worried at this moment? No, no. People, uh, there's a goodness in people. And we just have to find the good in us all. And that's what it's all about. And he is so right, and thank you, Ed, for saying that to us all tonight. Well, Ed's not stopping. Right now, he's working on two new statues. The African-American poet Paul Lawrence Dunbar for the city of Dayton, Ohio, and the 1800s U.S. Supreme Court Justice John Marshall Harlan for Center College in Danville. Harlan was a white man who was once a slaveholder, but he transformed himself and started routinely supporting blacks on civil rights decisions. And in the 1800s, he called our Constitution colorblind.